Where the boys are, where the boys are, where the boys are, someone waits for me. Alright, why the fuck, why does Jordan Love have normal dev, I swore, actually I think I might know why. But today we have another free agency based rebuild and this one's about to be a fucking banger this is probably my favorite free agency move that was made by any team i'm not gonna say it's the best i think saquon may have been a better move for the eagles and i think that i think derrick henry might have been a good move too there's a lot of shit that's gone down you know Keenan allen to the bears you know all the shit but this is definitely my favorite the packers already had the youngest team in the nfl went on to win a playoff game and then they had a young stud fucking running back Dude, I, I'm so excited to watch the Packers this year. But after editing my last video, I realized I did way too much yapping in the beginning, and I don't want to lose y'all's attention. If you've seen the last two videos, um, it's not going to be perfectly accurate because you can't use custom rosters and start at the current state of the NFL season. So we had to use the rosters, force our record, and so we're going to have somewhat of a decent around the same area draft pick. But we are going to be rebuilding this team with Josh Jacobs, and that's all that matters. And interestingly enough, after forcing our record, we have a week one playoff game against the Cowboys. I'm not going to pay too much attention to to these uh, playoffs because they don't matter. But I am just going to go ahead and see if we beat the Cowboys here like they did in real life. Oh, okay, we didn't. Nobody retires for us this year, but the Vikings lost Harrison Smith. The Why did the Lions have Calais Campbell? They didn't sign him, did he? Yeah, they didn't. I guess in the sim, the Falcons cut them and they picked... I don't know. Who cares? Before re-signings, we have Eric Stokes' fifth year, so we'll go ahead and pick that up. Now that I did that, I'm already regretting it. I don't know why I just picked up a 20 million fifth year for 78 overall, but it's too late now. I don't even think we have too many important re-signings here other than that, so whatever. Why did I pick that up? I'm such an idiot. So just like the other videos, free agency isn't going to be completely accurate because Josh Allen was in the last one. Some players that have already been re-signed are going to be here because... I don't even think that you can change people's contracts when you make custom rosters, but yeah, Legereus Sneed got tagged. Um, I don't think the Packers are bringing back Bakhtiari, if I'm correct. Yeah, he's still a free agent. I don't think they're going to bring him back. He's had a lot of he's had a lot of injury issues, so we're going to not re-sign him here. I don't even know who we're going to go for. Why is why are there rookies in the? Oh my god, it's this fucking thing I downloaded. God damn it, dude! Kind of leaves me in a weird. They're all going to have normal devs, so I don't think. They'll be used very much. That's really frustrating. We'll just ignore that for now. I don't, I don't know. I downloaded a new custom roster today because there's been recent moves that weren't on the current one or weren't on the previous one. So I downloaded a new one and now there's fucking, there's going to be two of every rookie. I don't know. There's not much I can do about it. In free agency, I think we're just going to go for DJ Humphreys. We need a new tackle and I don't see much else I'm interested in. If we get DJ Humphreys, we don't have to worry about drafting a tackle. We can use our first round pick on a corner or something like that. God, I'm so sorry about there being doubles of the rookies. Hopefully, they don't really get signed much since they're all going to be normal. But that's actually really frustrating. Because I, I realistically could not be lazy and just restart it, go back to the old roster, force the record again, do all this over again. But that sounds like a lot of work, so I'm just going to be a lazy piece of shit, I guess. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! But before we hop into today's video, make sure... Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the channel. At the moment, we're sitting at about 390, so we're only 10 away from 400. So that means you could be in the first 400 subscribers. All you got to do is turn your phone vertical and press subscribe, and it means a lot to me. Feel free to comment any videos you guys want to see next, especially, you know, a free agency-based rebuild because these have been a lot of fun. But I love you guys so much. Make sure you subscribe. So going into the draft, we definitely need to address the interior just a little bit on the O-line, but it's not too bad right now. Um, we have all young receivers, so I'd be okay with sticking it out with this receiving core for right now. But on defense, I think we could use another corner. I don't know why Eric Stokes has superstar. I don't think he had that previously. But we definitely need a safety. We don't have a Darnell Savage anymore. We definitely need to add a little bit to the D-line. Damn, I wanted to take Cooper DeGene because I think he's projected to go to the to the Packers. But I don't see if there'd be much of a point in doing that when we have this big of holes on the D-line. I don't know. We'll have to see what we want to do there. And we're probably going to have a better pick than the Packers do in real life. We pick at 20. I want to say the Packers pick at like 24, so it's close enough, I guess. And you know what? Those top like five teams weren't too far off of real life, so I guess we can make it work. I'm more just frustrated that there's going to be two of every rookie. Oh my god. 
Should we go with Lyatila 2? But he has Elite Excel, he has great speed, only solid strength, but he has A power moves. And every time I play this game, Lyatila 2 wins Defense Rookie of the Year. I'm also using a different draft class in the previous videos because I was using Bengals originally, then I switched to a different one. And some guy said to switch back to Bengals, and I think it's going to work out better because the draft orders were really, really bad. I think it's going to be bad anyway because this game's just kind of bad, but I like our first round pick. Do I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be available this late in the second round? Probably not. He'll probably go in like the high first, early second round, which makes me not want to take him to keep it realistic. But when we have the opportunity to take a player like this, we are going to go ahead and do it because fuck it. I'm not. It's not my fault. It's Madden's fault. Damn, Kool-Aid McKinstry, no hidden dev. Did he slip even more down draft boards? And I don't know. Like, I, did he have a bad combine? Shit, dude. I don't fucking know. Shit, I don't even know. Like, I can't even tell you that. Like, you know, like, if I, I don't know. Like, never know, you know, like. And we're going to go with Dominic Pooney next. 22 years old out of Kansas. His combine looks pretty good here, but he has A lead block, A lead block, A pass block, A impact block, and a lot of A to C. So he's going to be a good player to start, hopefully start on our O-line for the interior because we need help there and with our last pick we're just going to go with theo johnson we need help at tight end and i mean he looks pretty good here in this class he has elite jumping and elite speed a medium route a short route b impact blocking may as well go ahead and take a chance on him only normal dev but hopefully he's a pretty decent overall we can maybe even start him just to, you know start getting him to develop uh we'll let the cpu take over from here and we'll see how we did in the draft recap i'm gonna mooch off of td barrett here real quick every time i watch him he does like a comic question of the day so fuck it, we're going to steal his idea because that sounds fun. I want to know what your guys' favorite team is and what player you want your team to draft this year. So go ahead and make sure you answer that in the comments. But Laitula 2 is a 77 overall. Khalid McKintry is a 74. Dominic Pooney is a 73. And Theo Johnson is a 72. He should be high enough that we could, you know, start him. But the rest of the draft was okay. The CPU went ahead and took James Williams. They also took uh, Jawar Jordan. I don't even know if I'm saying that right, dude. Oh, I wanted to check the draft order. Let me do that real quick. All right, Olu Fashanu, first overall, Dallas Turner, number two, Joe Alt, number three. Yeah, the draft order is not much better in these draft classes, but I will say Caleb Williams falling to the Bears is going to make this better because at least it'll stay somewhat realistic. And Marvin Harrison going to the Cardinals is actually not too bad either, so I'll take it. But here's how the offense looks after the draft. We are going to go ahead and start Johnson at our number one tight end, and here's how the defense is looking. Honestly, forgot to draft a safety, so I'm glad that the CPU took one for me. And then we'll move McKinstry up to the third corner, get him some playing time. But it's time to officially get the rebuild started, hop into year one. We're definitely a playoff team at the least. We'll see how Madden thinks about that because we all know how this game likes to go most of the time. But let's get to the midseason and let's see how we're doing. There we go. We are 5-2 and two at the midseason. We have the second offense and points per game. We only have the number 21 defense. I think I'm going to go ahead and change our playbook. You know, save us a favor and just do it now. Save us a favor, do us a favor. God, Maddox. You know we're going to rock. We, oh, my God. You know we're going to rock with the Las Vegas playbook. They, they get so many fucking stats in that playbook. But Jordan Love is actually second in the NFL in passing yards with 1,700. And he also has a 14-3 to touchdown interception ratio with a 79 completion percentage. Oh, my God. Josh Jacobs is averaging 6.4 yards per carry, has over 700 yards in seven games and eight touchdowns. Jaden Reed is a leading receiver with 500. Christian Watson doing good. Romeo Dobbs already has five touchdowns. O-line's doing okay. Our new addition in DJ Humphreys isn't doing the best, but honestly not bad. And look at my boy Laitula too with five and a half sacks already on the year. I'm telling you, every time I fucking use the real draft classes, he wins defensive rookie of the year. I don't know what it is. But we have 11 players ready to negotiate here. We have 82 million. We have to bring back Jordan Love. We have to re-sign Kenny Clark. We have to bring back DJ Humphreys, Kashawn Nixon, and honestly, not too many important players other than those guys. But we, you know we want to bring back Jordan Love. Uh, five years, 200 million. This honestly isn't crazy expensive for a quarterback, so we'll go ahead and give this to him happily. Oh, he needs more. If you like everything about it, why do you need more time to th whatever? Um, Kenny Clark is getting older, but, you know, it'd still be nice to have him back, so we'll give him three years, 46 million. He's also not going to resign right now. It's unfortunate. DJ Humphreys will hold off till the end of the year. Same with the rest of the players. Um, I'll probably sim a week ahead and just resign Jordan Love just so we can get that out of the way. And we did beat the Titans to advance to six and two. So if you liked everything about it, what do you even want more? I'll give you a hundred grand more a year for your bonus. Yeah, this game is so stupid. Um, we'll probably just hold off on Kenny Clark until the end of the year. At least see how he does first. Jordan Love threw for 367 passing yards and four touchdowns that game, by the way. Oh, my God. 
But I will see you guys at the end of the year where we are hopefully in the playoffs. We're 6-2 and two right now, so I don't see any reason we should unless we tremendously fall off a cliff. But I'll see you guys at the end of the year. And we finished the year 12-5, and five, not bad at all. The defense did pick up in the second half of the year, and the offense stayed great. We had the third offensive points per game. We had the number two rushing offense, the number eight passing offense. And we finished with the 17th defensive points per game. We had, like, the 30th at the midseason, so definitely not bad. Jordan Love finished 7th in the NFL in passing yards with 3,900. 31 touchdowns, 5 interceptions, 73 completion percentage. This is really good numbers here from Jordan Love. Happy Father's Day to uh, all the Bears fans out there. Go Pack Go. Josh Jacobs with 1,700 rushing yards, 5.8 per carry, and 18 touchdowns. He averaged 105 rushing yards per game. Oh, my God. Jaden Reed finishes with 1,100 yards and 4 touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs, 1,000 yards, 12 touchdowns. Christian Watson, 700 yards, 6 touchdowns. And Theo Johnson as a rookie was not bad. 500 yards, 8 touchdowns. The O-line was actually really good. What's this, like 17 sacks allowed on the year, one per game? Quay Walker leads the team in tackles with 131, 20 TFLs out of Lai Tula 2, 15 out of Kenny Clark, 11 out of Devontae Wyatt. If I'm butchering this name, by the way, let me know, but I don't care that much. But he also got 15 and a half sacks as a rookie. He'll be up there for Defensive Player of the Year. We know he's going to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, seven sacks out of Rashawn Gary, five out of Kenny Clark, five out of Devontae Wyatt. Two picks out of Quay Walker, and that's actually the only picks we had all year. Quay Walker actually had a really good year, though. 131 tackles, four TFLs, a sack and a half, and two picks. Two picks on the year, though, kind of sucks. But MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes. We came in seventh place with Jordan Love. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Brandon Ayuk. Josh Jacobs at number seven. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Micah Parsons. We did come in second place as a fucking rookie. That is insane. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Marvin Harrison Jr. For the Cardinals, Caleb Williams in second. We came in fourth with Theo Johnson. And Jawar Jordan came in tenth. Defensive Rookie of the Year obviously goes to Laitu Latu. Jared Version number two. And we actually came in ninth with James Williams as well. So we actually had a really, really good year. Like, I'm insanely happy with how that went. We have a wild card game against the Giants. They have the number one pass D in the league, but their offense was really bad. So we kind of match up pretty evenly here. I think we deserve to win. We have a better record and a higher overall. But let's just send to the divisional and let's see how bad of a game this game this whoa I can't talk but we do win at least we went 48 to 28 we're going against the Cowboys who also had a bad offense this year but also had a good defense they had the number one passing defense in the league so we're going to get some good defenses here in the playoffs this should be a good game as well but honestly we'll probably lose and I'd be okay with it because we are four overalls lower but let's send to the NFC championship and we beat the Cowboys 34 to 28 we're going against the Niners in the NFC championship who actually have the highest overall defense of all the ones we played and the least or the most points per game allowed I don't know but they also have the number two rushing defense in yards so that's a little bit scary but we had a better offensive points per game we had more pass yards per game and we had more rush yards per game so another game we match up pretty evenly but we are six overalls lower so let's just send to the Super Bowl we're, we're probably going to lose this game but an NFC championship in year one not bad at all and oh my god we are in the Super Bowl in the first year and none of these were force wins by the way this all happened from the CPU on its own I love how the game just lets the lower overall team win every time. I mean, I don't like it when I'm the higher overall team, but now that I'm the lower overall team, I'm fine with it. The Baltimore Ravens had the number two offensive points per game, the number one rushing offense, and the number one defense in points per game and the number one rushing defense. So this is literally probably the only team we can't handle. We had the 13th defense in rushing yards per game allowed, and they have the best rushing offense in the league. And we have... Like, our, the best part of our offense is our rushing offense. They have the number one rushing defense in the league. Before we hop into this game, let's take a look at our dev traits and see if anybody, you know, got a dev up. Okay, I was actually expecting to see Jordan Love up to Superstar, but I do not. Romeo Dobbs goes up to Star, though, which is great to see. And on defense, Ayatula 2, of course, goes up to X-Factor. I don't know why he wouldn't. Uh, I want to say that is all the dev ups, but honestly, dude, I cannot believe we're in the Super Bowl in the first year. Let's go ahead and hop in here. Let's see how it goes. I think it just said the Ravens were 15-2, and two, so... We deserve to lose every game. If there's any game we deserve to lose the to deserve to lose the most, dear God, um, it's definitely this one. So, but I mean, I said it for every single game. So let's just you know, let's just see what happens. We're driving down the field early, and we do get a touchdown on our opening drive, and we get a stop on defense. They get a stop on defense as well and go score pretty quickly. But we're able to get down the field again and kick a field goal. We take a three point lead and get another stop on defense. They stop us and go down and score a touchdown but miss the extra point I believe it's 13 to 10 and they get another stop on defense we get another stop on defense and we score a touchdown to go up four going into the half and we get a stop to open up the second half we get stopped pretty far down the field but we get another stop on defense can we get down the field and put this away we take an 11 point lead 
and they score again to cut it to five with like three minutes remaining but we just took a 12 point lead there's only four seconds left and jordan love has taken the packers to the super bowl in the first year of this rebuild we haven't even done shit yet this does remind me though i want to make my super bowl prediction right now for whenever it happens next year the super bowl is going to be the packers and the Bengals. i'm telling you right now if joe burrow was healthy last year he would have been in the super bowl this year he's the only guy that could stop patrick mahomes if it's not the Bengals, though it will be the texans but I think the Packers are the team in the NFC that will make it. But dude, why why am I talking about that whenever we just won a fucking Super Bowl in the first year? Holy shit. Texas. I'm just here to tell uh, you, Pack is back. <laughs> you heard it. I haven't won a Super Bowl in like five rebuilds, and I just come out here and win year one. Did Jordan Love win Super Bowl MVP? No, it went to Josh Jacobs. Oh my god, that's perfect for the video. I'm not even upset about that. I should have took a look at the game stats. I think I still could, but that sounds like a lot of work. And nobody retires. Nobody retired in our division, actually. But we have to hop into the re-signings. We probably will bring back everybody we missed out on. We just won the Super Bowl. I don't see any reason we shouldn't. Especially when we have as much money as we do. I think we still have like 60, 70 million to spend. Yeah, 71 million to bring back Kenny Clark. He didn't accept our last offer. So we'll up this a little bit. We'll up this a little bit. We'll give him three years, 50 million. And he does want to come back. Why would a player, though, have no interest in re-signing with a team that just won the Super Bowl. I don't know. We'll accept Quay Walker's fifth year. Nine million is pretty cheap. We'll try to get DJ Humphreys back. We'll give him two years, 29 million. And he's excited to stay with the team. We'll let go of Devontae Wyatt. Actually, Devontae Wyatt wasn't terrible. We'll bring him back. Oh, this is also just the fifth year, so that's perfect. Kashawn Nixon, we'll let go. Josh Myers. I think we can get a better replacement. If not, we'll try to bring him back in free agency. And I think that's going to be everybody we're going to bring back here. And that also leaves us, what, 42 million to work with in free agency. So, Let's add some big names and let's go back to back. Joel Batonio would be a good addition to our interior, but one that we don't need that much. We just addressed interior in the draft last year. We could go for Tyron Matthew, but I also think we could just draft a safety. I don't know. Like, I want to go for players. We could go for Jonathan Jones. That wouldn't be a bad addition. I don't know. There's not anybody here I'm that interested in. We could go for Khalil Mack. Him and Rashawn Gary would be a really good edge duo. And we all know how good Khalil Mack is in this game. Maybe we just beef up this defense. Again, I don't know why Tyron Matthew wouldn't be interested in playing for a team that just won the Super Bowl. But we're going to go for Tyron Matthew. We're also going to go for Khalil Mack. We're definitely going to get Khalil Mack. We probably won't get Tyron Matthew. But let's go ahead and send these offers through. See if either of these players want to sign. And we actually got both of them. Okay, our defense is about to be so nasty. We'll move Tyron Matthew to strong safety. And now I don't even know what we're going to do in the draft. We may as well trade our first round pick. I don't know. Maybe it'd just be smarter to use our first round pick on like a position where we have an older player so that we're ready for the future. But going into the draft, I don't even know what we could take on offense. We could take a center, but it's not like we really need one. Zach Tom had a good year last year. We don't need to replace him. We could, I guess we could technically use a better tight end, but I don't see any reason why we would if we just won the Super Bowl. The receiving core is looking really good and they're all young, so they're going to keep developing. But on defense, may, we could definitely use a middle linebacker. We need to make sure we move Tyron Matthew over to strong safety, but we need a middle linebacker, and we're probably going to draft an edge rusher as well so that we're ready to lose Khalil Mack or Rashawn Gary. We'll try to address the D-line as well, but our first pick will definitely be middle linebacker, unless there's some crazy D-tackle, because we could honestly use that. So D-tackle, edge, middle linebacker, that's all we need to draft, so let's make this work. I think in the first round, we may go with Gabe Love. He's only 21 out of Tennessee. He's 308 pounds. His ratings, nothing is like crazy, but everything's like at least good or great other than his jumping, and I could really care less how good my D tackle is at jumping. B awareness, block shedding, power moves, and finesse moves. He also has A to C play rec. I think this is a good pick. He'll probably have hidden dev, and if he's higher than a 70, he can start on our D line for us now. 88 strength, 81 excel, our potential new starting D tackle right there. Thinking in the second round here, we're going to go with Addison Woolmack. We'd move him to middle linebacker alongside Quay Walker. He has elite speed. B zone coverage, A to C man. He also has B block shedding, B impact blocking. He's a run stopper who also knows how to play coverage. So I think this is a really good pick from us. Even if he has normal dev, I think he's going to be a good player. But he doesn't have normal. He has hidden with 87 speed, 87 excel. He also has 76 strength, which doesn't sound very high, but that's pretty good for a linebacker. And none of the edge rushers look too crazy. We'll still try to take a chance on one just so that we have a replacement for when we lose Khalil Mack. Unless there's not a crazy one, then we'll just try to add some depth to the O-line or something. Jamie Vincent doesn't look terrible. He's 22 out of Ohio State. He skipped his pro day and his combine. B pursuit. Actually, yeah, he looks pretty bad. What about Stephen Shirley, 22 years old? He has elite speed and excel. B man. How is this guy a speed rusher if he has B man A to C zone? 
C to F finesse moves. It says he's a speed rusher. Fuck it. May as well take a chance on him. This is a pretty weird pick. He has it in dev though, so fuck it. Let's we'll take it. I'll probably just make one more pick here in the fourth round, just try to find some depth for our O-line. But I'll see you guys at the draft recap and we'll see how we did. So I'd say we actually had a pretty decent draft. Steven Shirley is a 63, so he wasn't decent. I should have known when he had C to F finesse moves and he was a speed rusher, but he had hidden. But I ended up taking the center as well. He has hidden dev. He's a 73 overall. Addison Womack, we got to make sure we move him to middle linebacker before I forget. He did go down to a 72 at middle linebacker, but it's not that big of a deal. I'm pretty happy with how our draft went. I thought we did better than this, especially when I saw Shirley had hidden. Once I saw he had hidden, I thought he'd be good, but the C to F finesse move should have sold me, honestly. Should have sold me into not taking him, if that makes sense. But we are coming off of a Super Bowl year, and I want to say our team only got better. We developed, we added more to the O-line, and we added a few nice pieces on defense. We added love to the D-line, and we added Womack to our linebacker group. We added Tyran Matthew in free agency. Dude, this team is nasty. I'm sure that since we won the Super Bowl last year and only got better, that we're going to end up being like 8-9 and nine this year. But hey, let's not speak that too, too... Oh my god. Let's not speak that into existence. Let's have faith in this game. They gave us a Super Bowl in year one. Can we get a Super Bowl in year two? May as well set our goal to win the Super Bowl at this point. But it is time to hop into year number two. I'm going to see you guys at the midseason. We're going to see how the teams do and hopefully... As good as last year, hopefully even better. We have an 85 overall team. Let's see how we do. And we're only 3-3 three and three at the midseason, but we have. I'm assuming we have a harder schedule since we won the Super Bowl. Offense is not doing nearly as good as last year. Defense is doing about the same. I mean, Jordan Love's still doing pretty good. 1,100 yards, 15 touchdowns, 5 picks. Josh Jacobs is having a down year. This is still a good year, but a down year for him. He's only averaging 4.5 per carry. Christian Watson's the leading receiver as of right now. Ooh, Zach Tom's not having a great year. Maybe we'll replace him next year. Khalil Mack has five sacks, so I mean, I guess that's good to see. But we have 16 players ready to negotiate here. We have $54 million to bring back Josh Jacobs, Eric Stokes, Xavier McKinney, Romeo Dobbs, Christian Watson, A.J. Dillon, Zach Tom, Rasheed Walker, Khalil Mack, Devontae Wyatt, and that's about it. I'm pretty sure that the Packers gave Josh Jacobs a contract. Yeah, he was given a four-year deal worth $48 million. So we're just going to go ahead and give that to him. We'll make sure that he's on his second year since we already did one year of the rebuild. All right, cool. We got Josh Jacobs' his contract. My game is fucking bugging. But you know we want to bring back Eric Stokes. We'll give him three years, $21 million. He's happy to resign. <laughs> Xavier McKinney, we'll try to bring him back. He's not very interested, but we'll give him four years, $59 million. He's unsure if he wants to take it right now, but whatever, because I'd rather have Romeo Dobbs anyways. We'll give Romeo Dobbs four years, $44 million. He's also not ready to sign. What about you, Christian Watson? Do you want to sign four years, $38 million? And he's excited to stay with the team. Thank you. Uh, I guess we're just going to wait till the end of the year for everybody else. We'll probably let Zach Tom go after this year and try to replace him. But yeah, definitely not as hot of a start as last year. But we're an 87 overall team. I have faith that we'll bounce back. I'll see you guys at the end of the year. We'll see how we do. Okay, and we finished the year 13-4. and four. We went 11-1 and one on the back half of the year. We finished with the 6th offensive points per game. We had the number 2 rushing offense in yards again. 8th defensive points per game. We had the number 3 rushing defense. Jordan Love threw for 3,500 yards, 34 touchdowns, 10 picks, 70 completion percentage. Not as good as last year, but still crazy numbers. Josh Jacobs, another 1,700-yard season, 5.3 per carry with 16 touchdowns. Jaden Reed, 1,000 yards, 8 touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs, 700 yards, 7 touchdowns. Christian Watson, 600 yards, 7 touchdowns. And Theo Johnson, still doing pretty good. DJ Humphreys wasn't great. Zach Tom, I guess, heard me say I was going to try to replace him, and he decided to do good. I still don't know if we'll bring him back. Uh, Elton Jenkins wasn't very good. Maybe we'll replace him as well. Everybody else was pretty good. Tyron Matthew led the team in tackles with 117. 15 TFLs out of Kenny Clark. 13 out of Khalil Mack. 13 out of Rashawn Gary. 9 out of Gabe Love. 11 sacks out of Lai Tula 2. 10.5 out of Rashawn Gary, 8.5 out of Khalil Mack, 8 out of Kenny Clark, 4 picks out of Xavier McKinney, 4 out of Jair Alexander, 4 out of Jair Alexander, 1 out of Rashawn Gary, 1 out of Khalil Mack, 1 out of Quay Walker, 1 out of James Williams, and 1 out of Eric Stokes. Khalil Mack and Rashawn Gary having interceptions is interesting. MVP goes to Joe Burrow. Jordan Love is nowhere to be seen. Drake may appear for the Titans, though. That's interesting. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Saquon Barkley. Josh Jacobs at number 7. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Micah Parsons. Rashawn Gary at number 9. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Steve Weeks for the Giants. I don't even know if we had any rookies on offense that weren't on our O-line. But Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to James Barrett for the Buccaneers. We're actually nowhere up here. That's surprising to me. But who gives a fuck about awards? We're going to go back-to-back -back on these Super Bowls. We're facing off the Eagles. 
in week one. They have Saquon Barkley. He won Offensive Player of the Year. Before we get into this game, who won the weekly award in week 18? Rashawn Gary had eight tackles and three sacks. Jordan Love, 223 passing yards, three passing touchdowns. He also had a touchdown on the ground. Hey, if y'all could both have a game like that again, that'd be sick. Uh, the Eagles are a nasty team. They're higher overall, but we did have a better record, so let's just get to the divisional. Let's see if we can hopefully squeak out a win, and we do. We actually barely squeak it out. We win 17-9, to and we're going against the Seahawks in the divisional, who had the 13th offensive points per game and the 24th defense. How is this a division playoff team? I don't know. Let's just get to the NFC Championship. We should win this game, which means we probably won't based off how this video has been going. No, we actually kind of fuck them in the butt. We, go, we win 49-21. to Josh Jacobs ran for 219 yards. He had three rushing touchdowns and a receiving touchdown. Four touchdowns in one game, and Kenny Clark had five tackles and two sacks. Oh, my God. Dude, are my players on crack? Well, we have the NFC Championship against the Cowboys. If this was real life, I'd put $1,000 that the Packers would win it. But the Cowboys are pretty broken in this game. I think we beat them once already in this video. But let's see what happens here. We'll get to the Super Bowl. And we do lose, unfortunately. The Cowboys are going to be in the Super Bowl facing off the Jaguars. But, dude, two back-to-back -back NFC championships. Would have been nice to go to the Super Bowl again, but I really can't complain. No dev ups on offense again. But Womack had Superstar. Xavier McKinney and Tyron Matthew both went up to Superstar. Jesus Christ, dude. And we actually had no retirement, so we should be able to bring back Khalil Mack for one more year if we want. And the Jaguars ended up winning the Super Bowl, so who knows what would happen if we were there. I guess, I guess we'll never know, but let's get into this next season. Dude, I fucking forgot to press record. Okay, so we re-signed players. We brought back Khalil Mack. We didn't re-sign Zach Tom. We franchise tag Xavier McKinney because he didn't want to sign with us. So we needed a right tackle in the draft. There was Trent, or in free agency, there was Trent Brown and uh, Ronnie Stanley. We didn't go for either of them because we went ahead and added David and Joku to this offense. It was all we could afford. We're going to try to replace tackle in the draft. I had to give David and Joku like a five-year deal. What I was just saying whenever I was... Uh, or when I realized I wasn't recording, is that this game's dumb because I had to give a 30-year-old tight end like a four- or five-year deal for him to sign. But we definitely need a tackle in the draft. I, Elton Jenkins was already bad at guard. We don't want to play him at tackle. And then we'll probably just try to draft an edge rusher to, you know, eventually replace Khalil Mack. But I think if we get a good tackle here in the first round, like, we're per we're perfect, dude. I, I, I cannot believe I wasn't recording. That's so annoying. It could have been worse, though. I could have been not recording for like an hour. It was probably like 10 minutes. So we're probably going to go with Glenn Searcy, I believe is how you would say that here in the first round. He's 22 years old out of Ole Miss. He has elite strength. He had 39 bench reps at his combine. B run block power, A to C run block, B pass block power, A to C pass block, A to C lead block, A impact blocking. You get the gist. This is going to be our new starting right tackle, and hopefully he will have hidden dev, which he does. He also has 92 strength as a rookie. Well, I was going to try to trade our second rounder for a young edge rusher to be our uh, you know, potential future starter. But I couldn't really get anybody, so we'll just draft an edge rusher once we really need to. And then on this pick, let's just double down on O-line. Elton Jenkins is getting kind of old. 22 out of Oklahoma State. He had 36 bench reps at his combine. He has great strength. He's pretty good all around. A run block power, A lead block, A impact blocking. We'll go ahead and take him. Another hidden dev, 91 strength. And then we did lose A.J. Dillon, so I would hate drafting a backup running back here. Marquise Stevens is 6'1". He's 21 years old out of Memphis. He has great strength. The rest of his ratings look kind of dog shit, but he has A trucking, B break tackle, B carrying. He's most likely going to have normal. He's not even going to play for us, but fuck it. Let's take our backup running back. And then we'll let the CPU take over from here, and we'll see how we did in the draft recap. I mean, maybe we just keep Lucas Van Ness. He could be our replacement next year. But Glenn Searcy is a 73 overall. That's our new starting tackle. McCoy is a 74. He's a future starter. Divins is our new backup running back. He's a 71 overall. The CPU took a 71 overall receiver. This really wasn't a crazy draft class. The best player in the class was an 82 overall safety. There's an 81 overall guard. Other than that, there's a pretty big drop-off. Or not a pretty big drop-off, but only two players higher than 80 overall. But here's a look at the roster going into the third year. We have an 87 overall team, and that's, you know, without all the morale we're probably going to get from this year if we have a good year. New starting right tackle, we got McCoy who's going to get rotated in on the O-line. Same receiving core that we've had. Uh, we got a new backup running back. We added David Njoku to the offense. And then pretty much the same defense, but this defense is insane, so I don't see why we'd really, really change much. But let's go ahead and hop into year number three. We'll get to the midseason. We'll see how we're doing. We started off 3-3 three and three last year and finished like 13-4, and four, so honestly, I'm not going to look too much into what our record is this year. I got to set the season goal. You know what we're setting this goal to, win that fucking bowl. But yeah, I'll see you guys at the midseason. I was kind of starting to think this was going to be that, you know, 
inevitable down season where you just underperform. But no, we are 5-1 and one at the midseason. We have the 8th offensive points per game. We somehow have the 23rd rushing offense, but 2nd defensive points per game, 2nd passing defense, 1st rushing defense. Jordan Love has 1,500 yards, 13 touchdowns, only 2 interceptions with a 74 completion percentage. Josh Jacobs, 475 yards, 4.7 per carry, only 2 touchdowns though. Christian Watson leading the team in receiving. Looks like everybody's kind of getting some love. Ooh, DJ Humphreys is not doing good. Everybody else is doing great, though. Four and a half sacks out of Khalil Mack. Three out of Sean Gary. Three out of Kenny Clark. I mean, I'd say, I mean, we're fucking six and one. So, or was it five and one? I don't know. Whatever it was, we're doing good. I can't complain. But we have 22 players ready to negotiate. We have 109 million. So there's going to be some big names here. Got to bring back Jair. I'd even give him a two-year deal. Two years, 45 million. And that's exactly the offer he wanted. Xavier McKinney's here again. We had to tag him last year. We'll give him, oh, I don't want you for five years. I guess it doesn't matter, but four years, 74 million, and he does take it. Jaden Reed, we really want to bring him back. Four years, 54 million, and he also takes it. Quay Walker has been doing great for us this video. We'll give him four years, 54 million. Lucas Van Ness, we'll consider bringing him back at the end of the year because we may need him. Uh, same with Elton Jenkins, and yeah, we'll hold off till the end of the year on the rest of these guys. Even Tyron Matthew, because he could probably regress a little bit more and get a little cheaper. But yeah, 5-1, and one, a great start. Let's uh, finish off the second half of the year the same, and I'll see you guys then. Hopefully we're in the playoffs. Dude, I thought we missed the playoffs for a second. We finished the year 12-5. and five. We win the division. We actually win the conference. We got the number one seed in the bye. I don't know if I just repeated myself a bunch of times. Hopefully not. I kind of think I did. But Jordan Love finishes with 3,900 yards, 36 touchdowns, 5 picks, a 73 completion percentage. He's been going crazy every year. Josh Jacobs, 1,800 yards, 5.5 per carry, 19 touchdowns. If this isn't Offensive Player of the Year numbers, I really don't know what it is. What is. Christian Watson with 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs, 900 yards, 5 touchdowns. Jaden Reed, 800 yards, 5 touchdowns. And David Njoku really didn't do as much as I would like him to. O-line ended up holding up pretty good. 12, 15, what, like 19 sacks allowed on the year. Quay Walker leads the team in tackles with 109, 21 TFLs out of Lai Tula, 2, 19 out of Khalil Mack, 18 out of Kenny Clark, 9 out of Rashawn Gary, 11 and a half sacks out of Lai Tula, 2, 10 out of Rashawn Gary, 9 out of Clark, 8 and a half out of Mack, 2 picks out of Tyron Matthew, 2 out of Kool-Aid McKintree, 2 out of Jair, 1 out of Eric Stokes, and 1 out of James Williams. MVP goes to Patrick Mahomes. Jordan Love came all the way in ninth with those numbers. That is crazy. NFC Offensive Player of the Year does go to Josh Jacobs. Let's fucking go. He deserves it. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Mike Parsons. Pretty much goes to him every time. Latou at number four. Khalil Max also down here at number 10. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Sergio Nava for the Saints. We came in third place with our backup running back. Jesus. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Rudy Gordon for the Cowboys. I don't think we really had anybody on our defense. I was a rookie. But let's see who we are taking on in the divisional round. Taking on the Buccaneers, interesting. They have the 20th offensive points per game and the 21st defense. Uh, how, whatever, let's just send to the NFC Championship. We're probably going to lose this game. No, we actually win. I just got to keep thinking we're going to lose and we're going to win. We win 28-24. We're taking on the Rams here. Also had a bad offense and defensive points per game. Their defense was actually pretty terrible. We should be able to run up the score here against the Rams. Jordan Love last week threw for 219 yards and two passing touchdowns. But yeah, let's get to the NFC Championship Let's see if we can beat the Rams here. The Rams are pretty good in simulation, but I mean, with a defense that bad against an offense this good, and we had the number one defense in points per game, like realistically, we should win this game, but let's see what happens. And we win 42 to 17 over the Rams. Jordan Love threw for 253 yards, four passing touchdowns. He had a touchdown on the ground as well. And we're going to be taking on the Broncos here in the Super Bowl. I think they got a, one of the quarterbacks. Who did they get? I'm actually kind of curious. Jaden Daniels. Okay, that's who I thought it was, but I wasn't sure. But the Broncos also went 12-5 and this year. They had one of the worst offenses in the league. They had a good rushing offense, but they have the number two defense in points per game this year, but we are three overalls higher than them. Can we get a second Super Bowl in three years? Three straight NFC championships too, by the way. Jordan Love has still not gotten a dev trade upgrade. Neither have any of our receivers. And dude, we have so many dev trades on defense, like I can't even tell. I don't think we got any dev ups. I think our defense is just this good. I mean, I guess it's hard to get dev ups when you have that many dev traits, but let's hop into the Super Bowl here. I may even play a drive or two because next year is going to be the final year and I'm not going to guarantee, I can't guarantee we're going to make the Super Bowl or anything and I kind of want to play a drive with this team. The Broncos go down on the first drive and kick a field goal. We're going to go ahead and hop in and play an offensive drive here. All right, let's hit a little play action. Let's see if we can find someone deep. No pussy shit here. That's a dot. Come the fuck here. I'm really bad at commentating over gameplay, I've started to realize, but it's whatever. 
Let's give the ball to Josh Jacobs. What am I doing? We got he's the whole point of this video. They're kind of loading the box, but uh we got Josh Jacobs. It doesn't matter. I'm out of dirt. I am not out of there. Turbo, turbo, turbo. Uh all right. Fuck it. We're going to run this. We're going to bring Christian Watson over here to the right and he's going to get wide open. I'm calling it. Oh, okay. I kind of wanted him to stay inside of Dobbs, but whatever. Fuck it. Oh my god, that's a laser. That is a laser. He just, dude, did he just pat Sertan on the head? That is wild. I think if I put Dobbs on a slant here with this Texas route, I think we can just kind of make a read here. Ooh, can I make this on the run? Okay, he got stuck anyway, so it's not like it matters. All right, let's not get clamped up in the red zone here. The Broncos do have a nice defense here, but I think we can make something work. Let's get the ball to Josh Jacobs. Let's make, let's make the stick shorter, if that's how you would say that. Okay, I cannot read my blocks right now. I got one yard. I'm sorry I'm selling you, Josh Jacobs. Don't worry. We're going to we're gonna get it in here. We're going five wide. All right, I'm looking at Njoku, but I also think Dobbs or Wicks could be open here pretty early. I threw right to the defense. Oh, my God. I just got bailed. Okay, I just got bailed. Should I just uh, take that as a sign to kick the field goal, or should I be a man? No, I kind of want to win the Super Bowl. Let's, uh, let's kick the field goal. I cannot believe I just got... Oh, shit. I have a delay. Okay. I always forget I have a delay with my OBS, so I really got scared I was going to shank that kick. But that's going to be the only drive we play. I deserved to get intercepted there, but we, hey, counter blessings. We get a stop on defense, and we get good field positioning, and we go down and score a touchdown. We get another stop on defense. We get another touchdown. We're up 14 in the second quarter. We need to use some clock here and play smart, and we're just slinging it, I guess. But it's still 17 to 3. We go down and kick a field goal, take a 17 point lead. They do get a touchdown, but it's already in the fourth quarter. I was about to say it might be too late, but uh, they make it a three-point game here pretty early in the fourth quarter. But we get another touchdown and make it a 10-point game, and we get the ball back. We used a decent amount of time there, and we got a stop. So I think this is about all she wrote. And you're, the Green Bay Packers are Super Bowl champions for the second time in three years. In the street, street, street victory, yeah. Dude, this is the most fun rebuild I've done in a long time. This game just normally like shaves years off my life. But dude, this has been, oh my god, I'm having so much fun. Can I still show the schedule to make sure y'all know I didn't force those wins? Yeah, here we are. Didn't force it against the Bucks, didn't force it against the Rams, didn't force it against the Broncos. It shows I just played one drive. Holy shit, dude, this is awesome. I wish every rebuild went like this. But who won Super Bowl MVP? Khalil Mack. Okay, Jordan Love just can't get a Super Bowl MVP, I guess. Standing in the Hall of Fame. Did Khalil Mack retire, though? He actually does not retire. Okay, and Derek Carr finishes his career with the Lions. That's interesting. But that means we probably don't even really need to draft an edge rusher this year because Khalil Mack is still going to be able to play for us. And even if Khalil Mack is like an 80 overall, he's still going to be insane because for some reason this game just loves him and is going to make him do good no matter what. So we have $42 million. We still We have the fifth year for Eli Tula too, but this is the final year, so we're not going to bring him back. We'll let Lucas Van Ness go. Um, I don't see any point not bringing back Elton Jenkins if he takes two years, 46 million, which he does. And then I think the only, oh no, we have Tyron Matthew as well, but he's still pretty cheap. We'll give him one year, 9.7, and this offer is perfect for him. And I think we should still be able to afford Khalil Mack as well. Yeah, he's down to an 82 overall, but we can afford this. We can even afford to go player friendly, so we'll give him one year, 8.7 million. What does suck is we're not going to have money to spend in free agency, but if there's some good name that I see in there that I want... We'll, uh, we'll make something work. I'll restructure some contracts. But realistically, like, what would I even add to this team? Dude, if my dogs bark, I'm going to kill one of them. See, like, none of these players in free agency are really, like, useful to us. Should I just sign a kicker? We can't even afford to sign a kicker. Who cares? I guess let's just hop into the draft. We'll just draft a bunch of depth, and then we'll get into the final year. Dude, can my dogs please stop barking? In the first round, we'll probably just go with Jalen Raymond. Again, I don't really know what I'm taking here because the team's already so broken, so let's just take him. Fuck it. Only normal dev. It's unfortunate, but I don't really care. We'll go with Will Greenberry here. He's a pass coverage linebacker. Doesn't even fit our scheme, but he looks fucking nasty, so let's take him. He has hidden dev, too. And then in the third round, we'll just go with Trevor Malone. He looks kind of ass, but he looks the least ass out of everybody available, and he has hidden dev. So apparently we don't have a left tackle, and I didn't realize. I don't know how that happened, so I don't know what I'm going to do here. How do, dude, how do I do this to myself? Okay, apparently we lost DJ Humphreys to the Bears, so I'm trading a first-round pick for him. All right, so now we have the actual final roster. 
So let's sim to the playoffs and let's fucking go back to back like we're Drake. Back to back for the niggas that didn't get the message. So we finished 14 and 3. We got the one seed again. Let's quickly go over the stats and see we're taking on the divisional. Jordan Love is fucking insane. 3,800 yards, 35 touchdowns, 6 picks, 73 completion percentage. Josh Jacobs with another 1,800 yard year with 21 touchdowns. Jaden Reed, 1,200 yards, 5 touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs, 800 yards, 6 touchdowns. Christian Watson, 800, ooh, 800 yards, 9 touchdowns. Uh, Glenn Searcy decided to suck balls this year, but everybody else was pretty good. Quay Walker leads the team in tackles with 136. 17 TFLs out of Kenny Clark. 17 out of Gabe Love. 12 out of Rashawn Gary. 12 out of Lai Tula 2. 16 sacks out of Law 2. 11 out of Gary. 8.5 out of Kenny Clark. 3 out of Gabe Love. 2 picks out of Tyron Matthew. 2 out of Jair. 2 out of James Williams. 1 out of Womack, McKinstry, and Stokes. MVP goes to Dak Prescott. All right. Uh, we came in 8th with Jordan Love with those numbers, which is crazy. NFC Offensive Player of the Year does go to Josh Jacobs. He went back to back like he's Drake. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Micah Parsons, no Packers. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Lonnie Beckett for the Bears. We actually came in seventh. I don't even know who this is. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Malachi Jones for the 49ers, no Packers. Let's go ahead and see who we're taking on in the divisional round. We're taking on the 49ers, who are actually a higher overall team than us, but had a significantly worse year. We had the best offense and defense at points per game. I don't know how I didn't realize that yet. But it's about time that our uh, luck ends. So let's send to the NFC Championship and let's see if we get the loss that we deserve. And we do. We end up losing by a 14 to the 49ers. So that is going to be the end of the video. Uh, I would say this was a fucking success. If every video could go like this, that would be perfect. But we all know that's not normally about how it goes. We won two Super Bowls in four years, made three NFC Championships. So I don't know what else I could really accomplish with this team. If you made it this far, you clearly enjoyed the video. So make sure you leave a like and subscribe. That's all for this one. Deuces.